Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm back with another video. Today I really want to talk about journals and notebooks. Uh, the, the notebooks and journals that I write in every day, the one that I really want to write in every day that I'm getting better at, and then some that are um, not every day but they're frequently used. So over here on the left, you, you'll probably, those who follow me will, will probably remember some of these for sure. But this is my little passport um, traveler's notebook and it's got uh, all of my food diary in it. And it, you know, I track my intermittent fasting, uh, what I ate, and I count carbs loosely. I mean, I, I'm not as um, uh, rigid about that as I was in the beginning because I kind of know what everything has and I have a better feel for it. But I do, I do still track and count them. And so that's one. And then the other one is my bullet journal, which is in uh, the Lockbee uh, notebook cover which I just love it's keeping it protected but it also has plenty of space in here for all my for my stencils and my moon calendar phase calendar and my ruler and uh, we'll get into this one so I won't um, when I change uh, the camera we'll get into this one and also the decision notebook so I won't spend a lot of time on that one right now and then um, Oh, it, I forgot to mention, for anybody who didn't know, it is a Loistrom official bullet journal. So it is the uh, black edition that came with the book. It has a, the black on the, um, the black on the, oh, I can't think of it in the word. <laughs> oh my gosh. Gilded, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, that's what that is. It, it's a dot grid. Okay, so we'll put these. And then this one here is like a... Um, I think it's eight and a half by 11. I had the paper out just yesterday, but it's probably not here. So this is what I call my process notebook. And what goes in here, uh, kind of my tracking to make sure I'm doing my self-care really well. And also any rough notes, but these are notes that I may have to refer back to. And I do save these, but at the same time, th these notebooks will someday be burned. They don't need to be kept. I want to keep my bullet journal journals you know as long as i'm alive at least right at this point that's how i feel about it and this is a cvs caliber notebook um, with a college rule so that that's just something that i just love um it gets pretty messy in there and a lot of the pages i wouldn't show anyone because it's my thought process and and kind of a rough idea but i i often have these two together you know with me or over on, uh, wherever i end up um either at my desk or the couch to kind of start evaluating my day. But I start my day with my bullet journal. And I start my eating day when I break my fast with this notebook here. This is a tool that's really working for me. Now, another, I, w I wanted to mention, um, sometimes I get the horses in front of the cart. The reason I'm doing this <clears throat> video is to kind of, you know, I'll share with you what I'm using, but also to kind of evaluate because it seems like a lot of notebooks. It's eight all together. And, uh, and yet each one has a purpose. But I have really been questioning myself about consolidation lately. And I've wondered if I could consolidate a little bit of what I'm doing. But so far I, I haven't made that move. But when we get into the bullet journal, I'll show you that I am doing tracking in there now, which I wasn't doing before. And so I'm really excited about that. It's kind of a baby step for me, but I'll show you that. So then this one here is a Tau Tree uh, that I got from Amazon. It's a pocket size hardcover notebook with super paper in it. Let's see, it said, I copied in the front of it, thank goodness. 72 sheets, five millimeter dot grid, 120 GSM paper. So it has been super fountain pen friendly. I did a pen test in the back and uh, just haven't had any bleed through with it. I, I Occasionally I'll find one that feathers a little if the the ink is really aggressive but these were really inexpensive for such high quality paper two for 7.99 and that's that's really good i was i in the past i had gotten the loistrum ones and they were really expensive just for one so that gratitude journal is supposed to be daily and that's another one of my um probably going to transfer over to tracking that in my bullet journal because it really makes a difference when i do it and i do it almost every day but There'll be little streaks where I forget, and, and that is not my intention. And yet, I tried to do the out-and-out -out gratitude journaling in my bullet journal, and for me, that didn't work for me. I don't know why, but it just didn't. 
So then over here on this, these are the ones that I'm not using daily, but I, I'm using them regularly. So the first one is a little A6, and this cover was given to me by a pen friend, and it was made by Marie Lee Crafts. I'll drop that in the comments. I'll make a full list of what these notebooks are because sometimes I skip back and forth when I'm talking and, and in case you were interested, I'll do that. So inside, it's got two Midori A6 size uh, notebooks. One I've filled up already. And I, you know, I, this is my, did I already say? I don't think I did. This is actually my commonplace book where I kind of keep ideas, quotes, and also notes from some of my favorite YouTubers. So I filled one up and I'm on the second one. The second one was a, um, a plain one, a plain Midori, um, but it's lined and it's really good. I think that came in a ink flight box once upon a time. And then this one had the cats on the front. It was really pretty and I put a couple of stickers. And that was also from a pen friend. So I don't have a pen on here right now, but I always take a pen case with me. In fact, this lives in my, my uh, tote bag that I take when I'm going to go anywhere. Um, it seems like that's when I have extra time to watch videos, uh, unless I'm watching them while I, I wash the dishes. So there is that. And then this one is a Sojourner's cover. It's a B6 Slim. And inside is the Cafe Note. Um, in, I guess I don't need to take it out. It's just a plain notebook with Tomoe River paper, 52 GSM, and I just love it. Um, and this one, what I use this for is just notes. I mean, um, journaling where I'm actually, you know, writing it out long form. It's not like a, a planner, like my bullet journal. And it's not a messy, uh, disorganized, helping my brain dump kind of notebook as the CBS caliber one is. This is when I want to say something. And so, I, you know, I'm likely to write in this about 50% of the time. But it usually seems to be spurred by either wanting to get something documented, you know, like um, my progress with intermittent fasting. That's how it's, it all started in this one. But I'm almost finished. I've just got a few more pages. And then I have to decide which one I want to go to. Another one of the same size, which I do have, or probably I'm going to try the author one. But I love this cover. And it feels very luxurious and, and nice. And um, the size is really good too, but the, it's the Tomoe River paper that's really something. Okay, so this next one, this has uh, been changed since the video where I talked about a decision journal. I, I decorated it. And this is the Midori uh, notebook with, uh, it's got the, it's almost like graph ruled, but I think it has a, I think it has a name, so I'm going to have to look for that name, and, and when I um, link it down below, I'll put it there. So this is new to me, but I did take it out of the leather Chick Sparrow cover and just kept it in this, and then I decorated this. So we'll take a really good look at uh, the outside and the beginnings of the inside of this, because I think that this notebook is going to end up being something that I'll keep one like it for the rest of my life. I really do because it's already making me realize how I approach decisions, both very small decisions and big decisions. Um, it's so interesting because I can be either super impulsive and, you know, find myself ordering something or I can labor over which shampoo to get for half an hour and drive anybody who shops with me crazy. So it's so interesting because I need that mindfulness and I need to start... You know, I mean, so far, it, it was two fairly big decisions that I, I journaled about in here, but even that really helped. So these are the two that are going to go over to the other side of the table with me when we switch. And I've got one more. Okay, and then this one, um, this is the Loistrom composition size with a soft cover. And it has the dot grid, the 5 millimeter dot grid. And I'm taking notes from... Uh, atomic habits right now but I plan to run this one all year whatever I'm reading and hopefully I won't read more than half a dozen uh, nonfiction books this year because I'm trying not to overwhelm myself trying to go deep with what I do read about and uh, this is really good it's it's fairly fountain pen friendly it's a little bit 
uh, iffy, so I do a pen test in the back just to see how it's going to go. Um, and I have a lot of experience with that because it's the same paper that's in my bullet journal. So, eight journals, and I guess you call this a notebook because I'm just, this isn't actually a journal. And then this one here, the, the, uh, the little uh, commonplace notebook isn't really a journal either. It's more for note taking. But then this is a journal. This is the gratitude journal. This is the general journal. <laughs> and then this is kind of a log to, you know, everything that I eat, all my intermittent fasting. Every single day there'll be a little box up in the left-hand corner of how many hours I fasted and a box down in the bottom of how many hours my feasting window or my eating window was. Now that's new this year. I didn't used to do that. But I have really enjoyed seeing that at a glance. That helps me a lot. <coughs> and I also, I'm beginning to naturally go a little bit lower than the six hour eating window. I seem really happy at the five hour window with a 19 hour fast. So that's really cool. I mean, that's been working out really good. Okay, let's see. I can get my thoughts scattered faster than the wind can blow leaves, but I think that it's about time to move over to the other side so that I can show you just a little bit about what I'm doing because February is going to be a big month. Um, it's interesting because a lot of people have talked to me about Inco Rimo and asked me whether I'm going to do it. That is International Correspondence Writing Month, which is the month of February. And uh, Okay, so even if they were up and running, which I have seen that the website is not up and running this year, and I believe that the people that run it are having some kind of a personal crisis, but that's a rumor that I don't know the details personally about. I just heard that, and if so, they need our prayers, and, and I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, but I wasn't going to put my name in the address book anyway because I have enough pen pals. And in fact, I have pen pals that I can write to on days when I don't have actual replies. Right now I think I have five reply uh, letters. Um, let's see. One is a birthday that's coming up and uh, the other four are just, you know, ordinary replies that to write. So I'm hoping to go across the finish line of January with... with uh, uh, a very low reply, reply pile so that I can write to some of the pen pals that I haven't had a chance to or haven't heard, heard from in a little while. And why not surprise them during February? It's Valentine's month. So um, I have organized my February spread to reflect that, to give me a place to record who I wrote to and make the little checks so I can remind myself each morning because I do start my day in my bullet journal every day. So let's go on. I'll go on over and then uh, fix the camera and everything and we'll take a closer look at the decision journal and the bullet journal. And I'll be right back. There. Okay. So this is an A5 size Midori notebook and uh, it has the plastic slip cover that you can put on it. And it has a little pen loop, um, which I don't find too easy to use, so I've just got it tucked in the back. But what I did was I got into my collage stuff, and this was a magazine that, um, I think it was a gold spot uh, magazine that sells, you know, pens and inks and everything. And then I just went to my computer and did some of the wording. I wanted it to have the year and say decision journal. And I wanted my word of the year, which is depth, to be on the cover to kind of remind me. And uh, I found a sticker with a key. So that's the front and then the back. Um, oh, I hope there won't be too much glare, but okay. So this is more from that magazine. And I thought it was kind of cool because uh, it has the uh, varsities, the pilot varsities and then the platinum preppies. And I just, you know, took a couple of the things that I'm trying to aim for and glued it on like save money. Um, minimalize and use what you have. So I kind of made it wrap all the way around and I was kind of tickled with myself um, because it's kind of one of a kind. So so then inside I decided that I better have an index because I really think that, um, oh I haven't indexed the last thing I did but that's okay. Um, I really think the index is going to help and the pages aren't numbered in this but um, that's no problem because I just started numbering them. 
And then I did a little introduction of where I heard about doing this from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. He talks about it very briefly, but then I got online and I, I found some more stuff. It's not this new concept. It's, it's something people do, and I just love it. It, it says, um, well, record your decisions. Say why you made them what you expect the outcome to be, and then review your choices and see what, uh, where you were correct or wrong. So it's good that these are large enough pages because I've left room for like outcome. Um, and then it also somewhere that I read, might have been online, says, how do I feel about my current decision? No, um, it said, um, make sure you include how you feel. Okay, that was up here. But it, it, somebody recommended starting with where you're at and like I said sometimes I feel like I act impulsively other times I just delay deciding until you know it's like sitting on the nail not getting up off the nail sometimes you know <laughs> like a, a carpentry nail if you're sitting on it and it hurts get up change something you know I heard that a long time ago and it stuck with me but I have a tendency not to act quickly sometimes but on the other hand I can be the opposite then um, I want to find middle ground where I don't rush or delay uh, and I know I can learn from my own decisions. So my goal in keeping this journal is to get better at making decisions, not impulsively and not after letting too much time go by. Writing down decisions will help raise my awareness or mindfulness and improve my skill at taking appropriate action. I will write at least weekly in this journal. Okay, so um, I'm going to date the entries because I find that if I go back a long time Later, I get really frustrated if I haven't dated a page. So I did write about my, my pausing the Ink Flight subscription. And I know some people might laugh, but to me that was huge. And the first three times I tried to do it, I wasn't successful. And I still kind of, you know, wonder if it's the right choice and I miss it. But I, I feel that it is, practically speaking. So I wrote all about it. I, <laughs> I wrote about the relief that I'm not adding more samples and the sadness that I feel because I'm missing out. And, you know, they were sailor inks this month. So, oh! but, you know, but I just, I made the decision after lots of back and forth and everything. So, and then next steps, check in monthly here through the year to report progress and thoughts. Yeah, because the story's not over. So far, I've only missed one ink subscription and um, put $25 in my savings, so. And then I did decide, just as kind of a practice, to write about uh, adopting Coco because that was sort of a, a different kind of thing where our neighbor brought this little homeless uh, kitty that was out in the rain and under his truck and, you know, then and we, we just couldn't look back. We love him. Uh, but it was neat writing about it. You know, I, I got a lot of clarity writing about it. And then when it came to how I feel about it, I I can recognize I'm sh extremely happy to have this kitten in my life. Um, but I'm not going to say that it's, you know, easy because I still miss my three senior cats so much that sometimes, you know, it, it just hits me right when I'm even holding this kitty. But it's so good to be aware of the feelings and to understand that that's, that's what it is. That's what's there. That deep love for the others and uh, missing them. And uh, of course, a little bit of panic, like if he has a sneeze, you know, he might be sick or something, which sounds crazy. But this is by writing these things out. <coughs> it just amazes me. I, this concept, I'm just beginning. I, it's only two entries. And yet, even on some of the smaller things, I think it's going to really do me some good. And I am the type of person that if I'm excited about the journal, if there's something about either the cover or the notebook itself, th then I will just use any excuse to get in it. And so I wanted to do the decoration, not to rip off Gold Spot's old catalog, because I didn't rip up the new one. It was the old one that's, you know, been replaced now with the new one that came in. But so that I would feel motivated to get into this. And I'm excited about it. It's really, really going well. So now let's get into the bullet journal. This is, if I could only choose one of all these notebooks, this would be it. Um, the bullet journal has changed my life and it's four years now and it's just really changed my life. I love this Lockbee cover. This is the Lockbee Field Journal cover. Let me make sure, I think we're gonna have enough room. Oh yeah, in the front I always put my uh, Virgin of Guadalupe. I'm not Catholic, but my mother-in-law was, and uh, I came to really love um, 
uh, this Virgin of Guadalupe and the story and everything else. Okay, so in the front, I've done this before, but I have my stencil, my ruler, and my moon phases that I tore out of one of the little booklets and some washi tape stuck in there. Oh, that's a little card from this tiny little set of lunar uh, moon oracle cards. And uh, let's see. Oh, this is new. I couldn't... Boho Berry, uh, Cara Benz didn't seem to have a calendar for the moon this year. So I got this from uh, LunarAbundance.com. Izzy Spencer, the one that wrote the book Lunar Abundance, has put this one out, and if I had color ink, it'd be all kinds of pretty, but at least it printed out, so I'd have all the phases. So I keep that in there. But we're going to go straight to um, where I'm at, if I can find it. There it is, okay. Okay, so February 2020, because that's what this is really about, and I saved it for last. I made this out of just watercolor paper and a little tab, so I can do the blotting, and you can see it's already done a little bit of its job so that's good okay I'm hoping you can see this it's really hard okay so I kept it really simple and I know now just from talking over on the other side of the table that my other I'll explain this in a minute but uh, bear with me if I don't do things right when I think of them they may not get done <clears throat> so this is my February monthly spread which I always do. Oh, and this pen. This is the Mach 3 Morning Glory uh, Liquid Ink 0 0.38. I love this pen. It's really great for all these fine little tiny, you know, numbering and everything. And my other, my, uh, oh, whatever, Micron is almost out of ink. It's not writing very well. So I picked that one out of my shop to my stash kind of thing. So I just set this up pretty much the same every month. I put the numbers in the day, and then I put the moon, these are moon stickers that I had in the front here that my pen friend Casey sent. Um, they're right here, and they're really cool. From Honey Inked. Oh, these are nice. I love them. Um, so I did do all the phases this time, the full moon, the new moon, and all the other ones on here. And what's new is I saw somewhere, and I, I don't, remember now whether it was Ryder Carroll's actual video or whether it was Matt, I think Raglan is his name, but he said you could just track right, right where you already are doing stuff. So I'm going to track my walking, my organizing, and gratitude. So that'll help me get that gratitude back on track. And then over here, I always put my calendar of appointments, you know, what, whatever I know of already is going to happen. And usually on this side, I put my goals for the month, but I'm going to have to figure out a different way to handle that because I want to do one letter per day to pen pals, family, and, you know, whoever that I can uh, do that for. So I'm happy with this spread. It's very simple. And yet, this, you know, opening this up every morning, and I know because of this color washi that this is where my February starts. In January, I use the, um, I use this kind of a pretty blue, this one, so I knew where to go. And that worked really well. It worked better than a tab since I've got the pens on the sides and everything. <coughs> okay, and then, you know, a few stickers and great. And then the next one is for the channel. So, and I haven't done any of the filling in yet. So, but I'm doing the this spread every month, but I did change it a little and I want to put an X every day where I did a video because what I'm trying to figure out is what's my natural <coughs> algorithm or whatever. I, it seems like it's like Tuesday, Friday or Tuesday, Saturday or this week where it went completely berserk and, and it's completely different and ended up being like Thursday, Sunday. So, um, but I'd like to get a really good idea by tracking it. And then I'm going to write in my goals and my notes. And I always put what I plan to do and then what I actually published. Because that's been helping me too. And then the little calendar. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. It's been going super well in my bullet journal. But I can't get into a whole lot of it. Because there was some really, really strange stuff going on. Uh, that I had to work on. And I ended up including notes in here. Which I don't usually do. And so... Um, 
I just didn't, I couldn't possibly take enough time to cover up everything. But I thought these two spreads alone might inspire you because it did me to realize I am going to still write the letter a day. It is a leap year or wait, it's the year where we have 29 days. Is that what that means? I don't know. It's either that or the other way around. Oh, and I found this. My husband cut this out for me with a calendar. That's kind of handy. Although I think I do have a calendar. Let's see. Back where I have the blue, I had put, yeah, right here, I had put a calendar that I made myself because I couldn't find one printable that I liked or, I don't know, it just was frustrating me. And then I did a little bit more in depth about the depth here and uh, the whole kind of thing like that. So I think that's everything. I hope this will inspire you or at least show you if you're keeping eight journals, you're not the only one, that kind of thing. But uh, these are the two that I just can't seem to to go far from. And I, I'm really excited about both of them. And of course, the others are very uh, useful to me too, especially my little uh, passport size uh, traveler's notebook. I wouldn't know what to do without this. Actually, it looks like I need to do a little bit of... Uh, I need to get out my boot polish and fix this one. It just has gotten a little bit roughed up, but that makes it look even more loved. So, okay, I hope this was useful to you. And I want to hear about your journaling in the comments. Uh, how many you keep, what you write about, what what's are they working good for you? And I'm thinking that just doing this uh, video is showing me a little bit uh, I, I really believe that each journal and notebook I'm keeping is fulfilling their purpose. And I think if it works for me to have eight, I should keep doing it. And then if it at any point doesn't, then I can work on consolidating. But I will look forward to your comments and thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now.